Ladies and gentlemen, this last prayer treatment that we did here, work with it this week. The mind must be firm in this idea. The mind cannot go through this illusion of time and space infirm. The mind must have a rock to rest upon. Because you see, the rock does not move. Everything else moves. But the rock does not move. I am God and there is none else. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. The mind must rest on this rock. This rock, this rock, this rock that I am God and there is none else. This rock, this rock that all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me, not to circumstances. You see, all the power in heaven and earth is given unto me and if I want to, I can take it and give it to circumstances. Ask yourself this question. What am I giving my God power to? What am I giving my God power to? Say it again. What am I giving my God power to? Let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, the mind is constantly giving its power. And the question is, what are you giving it to? Because... Even money, even material money, every form of money is really the energy of the mind. Everything is the energy of the mind. And the mind is always giving its energy to some idea. And if you give your, the energy of your mind constantly to the idea of health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money, then these ideas will become firm in your mind like a rock and you will experience the same. So right now, as we close this lesson, we are going to practice this stuff. We're going to practice the healing, prospering power of affirmation. Power, all power, all power, all of it in heaven and in earth is given to the individualized mind. I'm going to lay something heavy on you. You may not want it yet, and this is why people suffer because they don't want the truth of themselves. You see, you are God individualized. Individualized. No, now don't let the ego take that. You go around telling people I'm God. <laughs> the mystics have a beautiful saying that I quote sometimes, and it's this. He who knows it tells it not, and he who tells it knows it not. <laughs> you don't go around just mouthing this to other people. You tell it to yourself. And the father that sees in secret will reward you openly. <laughs> this is why this type of knowledge that you're getting here in days of yore, it wasn't given to the general public. It was given only to secret societies. This is one of the reasons Jesus got crucified because he tried to tell the multitudes. Remember, we, we, we are going to continue the healing and prospering ministry of Jesus combined and I think this is supposed to be the first lesson in that and as you follow the healing and prospering ministry of Jesus it always says that the multitudes were following him when he was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and you remember a few days ago in the lesson it says that Jesus departed by ship and went to another city but the multitudes followed him on foot who are the multitudes? The multitudes are the various thoughts that follow a mind. And there are multitudes of thoughts always following the mind. And when the mind begins to realize its divinity, sometimes the multitudes of thoughts will try to crucify the mind. You see, some of you have heard something today and you're beginning to hear it for the first time, but you've got a whole multitude of thoughts that's been following you since childhood. Your mama told you this, and the, the preacher told you that, and your brother told you that, and your auntie told you that, and your boss told you that, and you heard so many multitudes of, 
of ideas about life and about different things. You were told that, that you were supposed to be poor because you were black. You were told that you've got to go through hell to get to heaven. And all these multitudes of thoughts just follow your mind. But there comes a time when the mind must come to recognize all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. All right. Are you ready now to use your healing, prospering power of affirmation? Ready. All right. Let's start with the idea of good health. Ladies and gentlemen, every day of your life, you've got to make the idea of good health firm in your mind. Say that. Every day of your life, you've got to make the idea of good health firm in your mind. Now, every day. Now, this is not just for sick people. See, that's another thing. This ministry is not just for sick people. This ministry is a healthy way of thinking. Say that. This and therefore a healthy way of living. You see, stop all this business of not praying until you have an emergency. Right. Because some people won't pray unless they have an emergency. <laughs> yes, and that's what brings it on a lot of times. But you see, you're in good stead if you do have an emergency, if you pray it up, as they say. All right. So you've got to make this idea of good health firm in your mind every day. And I'm making it firm in my mind every day. All right? So let's start with the healing, blessing power of affirmation. Repeat after me right here and right now. Right here and right now. I make the idea of good health firm in my mind. I make the idea of good health firm in my mind. God in me is my good health. God in me. In spirit, mind, and body. In spirit, mind, and body. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. And at every point in time and space. And every point in time and space. Throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. I tell you what I work with also in my success ideas. And every one of my success ideas almost, I make firm a positive idea about this old age business. Because the world will constantly beat on you. You're supposed to get old and feeble. See, so that when I get 85, I'm going to look better than this young fellow over here who's 85. <laughs> Did you see him last Sunday in his Easter suit? 85. When first came around here, he was an old man. Old man. Bent over and crippled up, couldn't hardly see. Crippled old blind man. Look what God can do. Just look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I know some people in their 40s wish that they were that healthy and strong. Why? He's been hanging around here with all of this healing, prospering power of affirmation. Let me tell you something. If you open your heart and your mind and your ears, if you just sit in here and let this just fall on you, it's got to do you some... Good. It's got to do you some blessed good. And just hear it again and again about good health. So I'm working on this business. So let's work on this age business right now. You ready? Let's make, let's make a positive idea firm in, in our minds about this age business here. Get Nana straightened out on that. See, she's you 80 years young. <laughs> All right. God in me is my good health. God in me is my good health. Regardless of what my age is or becomes. Regardless of what my age is or becomes. Age has no power over me. Age has no power over me. To make me sick and feeble. To make me sick and feeble. Only God in me has power over me. Only God in me has power over me. To make me well. To keep me well. At every point in time and space, throughout eternity, no matter what my age is or becomes. You see, I'm programming myself for good health at every point in time and space throughout eternity. I don't plan to stay in this beautiful body all the time, but I'm programming myself so that when I fulfill my divine purpose in it, I'm going to take it off just like I take off my suits. Amen. 
I've got a lot of suits that I don't wear anymore. But I took them off there in good condition. They're in perfect condition. I fulfilled my purpose in those suits. So you program yourself and don't get caught up in this age business. Age doesn't have any power over me. Age is not in charge. I am in charge. Say that. Age is not in charge. I am in charge. And one thing more about youthfulness, you see, youthfulness is not an age. Youthfulness is a quality. Say that. Now you remember that. And so say with me, I am the quality of eternal youthfulness. I am the very quality of eternal beauty. Make these ideas firm in your mind. I know I've been changed. I I know I've been changed, I know I've been changed, the angels in the heaven are changed.